If you didn't watch it live, it's hard to explain what it felt like when Conor McGregor faced off against Jose Aldo Jr. at UFC 194. There was so much build up to this fight and Aldo had been such a dominant champion for so long and it only took the challenger 13 seconds to put an end to it all. After winning the title in, to me, what is one of the most impressive MMA performances of all time, Conor McGregor got on the mic and said this. He's, he's powerful and he's fast, but precision beats power and timing beats speed. And that's what you saw there. Precision beats power and timing beats speed. Essentially, when it comes down to sports, it's not so much about what you have, it's about how you use it. There are a lot of climbers who you could probably apply this idea to, but if I had to pick one who embodies it, I would go with Tomoa Narasaki. Now, at first, this might seem strange. A lot of people, including myself, have a habit of typecasting Tomoa as the poster boy for the new style of climbing and chalking his success up to sheer explosiveness. While Tomoa does have an incredibly springy style and it does help his climbing, the more I started analyzing him, the more I realized that his skill set is a lot more nuanced and a lot more intricate than that. Tomoa has a way of reading the boulders differently from everyone else on the IFSC circuit, leading to some really creative and really beautiful climbing. It's what allows him to be a gold medal favorite against maybe one of the best climbers ever, and it's what we're going to be looking at in today's video. This is my breakdown of one of the most unique climbers our sport has ever seen. This is the audacity of Tomoa Narasaki. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be breaking down the route reading and technique of Tomoa Narasaki, who has one of the most distinct, recognizable, and exciting climbing styles on the IFSC circuit. Now, I know I made a video about Tomoa in the past, and a lot of you got mad at me for that, but I stand by what I said. Lead climbing is a weakness of Tomoa's, and there are some areas that I think he could clean up. But in this video, we're going to focus on his bouldering, because when he's at his best, Tomoa on the boulder wall is something truly special to watch. Like I said in the intro, I'm sure many of you already think you know what makes Tomoa's bouldering so good, his explosiveness. His ability to jump between holds and move through sequences give him a huge advantage compared to most traditional climbers, and it favors him on the more gymnastic style problems. I actually agree to some extent with this. Tomoa's explosiveness is a super important part of his climbing. In fact, I would argue it's the foundation of everything he does. It's not what makes him unique, though. He's not just an indoor version of Chris Sharma or a better Yoshiyuki Ogata. His success is a little more intricate, and I think it can be boiled down to two main things, his balance and his route reading. While his explosiveness is the basis of his climbing, Tomoa's balance is what allows him to channel that explosiveness in ways that work for him. It goes back to what I said in the intro. He might not be the most explosive or the most powerful climber, but his ability to use and control his momentum far surpasses anyone else on the IFSC today, and it's why he's one of the best boulderers in the world. So how does Tomoa's balance help him? If you'll allow me to generalize for a bit, balance has two main functions in rock climbing. First, it allows you to redistribute your weight, say to move weight onto your feet when your hands are bad, and two, it allows you to stay in position during dynamic movements so that you have a chance of catching yourself once your momentum is done. Tomoa does the first one well, sure, but the second one is what really allows him to stand out. This balance is why he's so good on paddle moves and other dynamic features. By keeping his body in the right position, he's able to land accurately on holds and stick these tricky moves that other climbers often struggle with. While he might just naturally be good at it, and he has that gymnastics background, that definitely helps. There are a few things that Tomoa does that contribute to this ability. The first is his setups. Whenever climbers go for a dynamic move, there's always some kind of wind-up that helps them build momentum. Usually it's an opposing motion. If you need to paddle out to the left, you'll first swing your weight to the right, allowing you to slingshot yourself at the holds. Tomoa is really good at staying relaxed when he does these wind-ups. He fully extends his arms and lets his body swing away from the wall. This allows him to generate more power. Additionally, moving your body away from the wall to start can then help you pull in close during the movement, which can stop you from falling off. 
Another thing Tomo is great at is doing this on bad holds and in tight spaces. If the position is too unsteady to allow for a full body windup, he just does a little swing like this with his arms to help him retain his momentum and keep kind of his rhythm going. Even when he's in awkward, cramped, or just ugly positions, he's able to generate a lot of momentum. Look at how he swings his hips to stick this move in Hachioji, despite how stretched out his body is. After his setups, his releases are very clean and really quick. This is important because it helps him get off the hold smoothly and he can change his position in midair to stick the move. Look at this dino to finish off the third boulder in Veil. You can see how sharp Tomoe's jump is compared to Yashiyuki. He just gets off the holds much quicker and his movements are a lot cleaner and it helps him get the top in fewer attempts. The next important thing for his balance is his hips. Traditional climbing wisdom is that your hips should be as close as possible to the wall because it helps direct your weight downwards. Tomoe usually does this, but sometimes, especially on footwork reliant moves, he'll bring his feet and his hips outwards, creating a few inches of space between them and the wall. This extra distance allows him to lean his upper body in, pushing his center of gravity close to the holds and helping him stay in place. Men's 1 at the Chongqing Finals is a great example of this. On his first attempt, he does this little flick with his hips into the wall. This initially pushes him in, but by the time he reaches the holds, his momentum is drifting away from the wall and he can't stick the move. On the second attempt, his hips are still close, but he doesn't throw them in as much. You can see that his upper body takes a much straighter path to the hold and he's able to stick it. Finally, look at this micro adjustment on men's one in Hachioji. Two climbers before him did an almost identical move to try to get the top and peeled off the wall. Tomoa does the same thing the first time, he's unable to keep his body on the wall, and he falls. On the second attempt though, look at the lightning quick mini drop knee he does with his right foot. This immediately shifts his hip in, creating a little more balance and a little more friction, and it secures him the only top of that route. So, by keeping it loose, managing his distances, and adjusting in mid-air, Tomoa is able to use some of the best balance of any climber to excel on futuristic problems. While his balance is good, though, it's not actually what defines his climbing. To me, that's his route reading. Again, I think there's an impulse to break down his route reading into an oversimplification. Tomoa is explosive, so he reads ways to explode through hard sequences and just does that. Like everything else about his climbing though, it's actually a little more intricate than that. Traditional logic is to break down a route into a series of interconnected moves. Each move flows into the next, and each one is supposed to put you in the position to make the next one as easy as possible. Climbers like Adam Andra or Kim Jain are excellent at this, and it's led to a lot of success for both of them. Now obviously Tomoe does this a lot. I would say that the majority of the time, he climbs routes basically the same that everyone else does. Every now and then though, and especially on harder routes, he seems to take a different approach. Instead of seeing a boulder problem as a series of interlinked moves, it's almost like he breaks routes down into two elements, movements and positions. Movements to Tomoa are basically the easiest way between two positions. To contrast that, positions are where he needs to be to set up his next movement, and so on and so forth. Now, I know it might sound like I'm just describing every single rock climber ever, but stick with me. Myrigan Men's 2 is a really good example of what I mean. After a brutal shoulder press, Tomoa ends up here, matched on the zone with a toe hook holding him in place, needing to transition over to this sloper. Now, most of the other competitors here went for an undercling method. This is really good traditional three-point climbing, but it looks pretty burly. Tomoa though just jumps with this super cool double grab, combining both moves into one. This kind of demonstrates what I meant. Instead of looking for the next move in the sequence, he just pays attention to where he needs to be, which is the sloper, and then takes the path of least resistance. Now this isn't some super unique thing, Kokoro Fuji makes the same read, but I think it demonstrates what I'm trying to get at. Tomoa seems to think less about individual moves and more about the easiest way from point A to point B. He doesn't always do this, and other climbers also do this, especially on competition routes, but Tomoa does it more often, and to me, he does it better than anyone else. Here's him doing it again in Chongqing, where he combines the press and match that most climbers used into this little kind of hop dip move.
Another example is men's one in Wuzhang, which had this brutal finish. Athletes tried a variety of different climbing techniques to get to the top. Mantles, compression moves, heel hooks, a lot of really clever climbing that ended up not working. And then Tomoa comes along and just, like, what even was that? He seems to think less in terms of conventional technique and more in terms of just finding the simplest way between two positions, and more often than not, it works for him. The other part of his bouldering is his positions. Once he's made a dynamic move, he almost always shuffles around and repositions himself on the hold. Now this is actually something I talked about costing him on the lead wall, but for bouldering, it's a massive advantage. Positions for Tomoa are just about putting himself in the right place to launch his next movement. He adjusts a lot on holds, choking up and moving as high as possible before going into one of those quick releases. It's not as noticeable or as flashy as the movements are, but it's really effective at allowing him to utilize everything we talked about before. The swings, his quick releases, and his balances. This is what I meant when I called him the deconstructionist, which I know is a made up word. When he's at his best though, Tomoa does just that. He deconstructs routes into their two bare bones elements, movements and positions, and executes on those two elements better than anyone else. It's not a constant thing, of course, but when it does work, it's really spectacular to watch. When it comes down to it, I think that's my favorite part of watching Tomoe climb. The swings and jumps are cool, sure, but underlying it all is an incredibly unique climber who uses balance, timing, and some really subtle route reading to excel against a field of insanely talented competitors. When he's at his best, Tomoe has the ability to come out against some of the greatest climbers ever and not just beat them, but to actually see the route differently to read sequences in a way that they can't, and break down routes into moves that not even the setters saw coming. And that is the audacity of Tomoa Narasaki. Alright guys, that's everything for me today. I really hope you enjoyed the video, and hopefully you can all stop yelling at me for my lead climbing critique of Tomoa now. I do really like him, and I know he's a really good climber. Thank you so much, as always, for watching. Drop a comment if there's anyone you want to see a climbing styles on, and I will see you all next time.